The system is broken. Everyone sort of agrees that. The, and the only way to do it right would be to create a more ethical, moral, logical system that's actually based on constitutional rights and how the government is supposed to be in terms of like the kind of power they're supposed to have versus what they're always constantly trying to acquire. But if you did that, how much would you have to blow the system up and how would we run things? Like what, what period of vulnerability would we have while we're trying to reestablish a new system? And how would we know if the system could even work correctly without being influenced by money and power and all the shit that's fucked it up right. for, for what we've got right now? It's, it's a daunting challenge. I think that like what, what Ron Paul used to always say was basically, I mean, these are my words, not his, but it was basically his plan was he goes, end all the worst shit first. Mm. Like end all the most evil shit first. So the first thing is like, stop bombing third world countries, right. stop locking people in jail for victimless crimes, stop doing, like, stop bailing yeah. out billionaires and corporations yeah. and stuff. Like, stop that first. You know, you don't, you don't start with like, well, okay, if there's a vulnerable population that's like dependent on this government program, get rid of it tomorrow. Right. You know, so like, try, you try to do that. And then the more of the corruption that you roll back, you're going to see, le you know, like less wealth being extracted from regular American people and going to special interests, kind of build that up over time. But it's a challenging thing to go back to go from this insane system to something less insane. Right. Is tough. And throughout human history, usually it's a, there's a pretty rough period. In sure. between there. It's usually not a smooth transition. Well, it's kind of fascinating. We think that this is the only country that has been really established as like a colony that went on to take over the world and it did it inside of 300 years which is pretty fucking wild yeah that's the most wild part is the time the time span it's Cause, pretty crazy because going from being a republic to an empire has happened before but we're the most powerful empire in world history at, at least in terms of like raw power right like the technology the level of wealth all that shit and we we did it in a very short time and some of the most unexceptional people are the ones who want to run it which is so weird when you see like the squad did you see that that debate that she was having with those bankers where they were talking about eliminating fossil fuels. She uh, made me root for the bankers, Joe. I was rooting for the bankers. It is quite a feat and to also, get me to say, you know, I think the head of Goldman Sachs is making a good point. Imagine that she was dangling the carrot of the $10,000 we gave back in student loan debt forgiveness, yeah. that those people are going to have bank accounts. Yeah. And those people that got that free money are going to take that free money out of your bank account. Like That was the immediate thing that she dangled, which lets you know some of the incentive involved in giving student loan debt. Yeah. It's not really that we want to help these people. It's that now we will have influence over those people for voting. Oh, it, this was clearly like just throwing a carrot like pre-midterm right. so How about how come only 10,000? How about all of it? Right. If you're going to really absolve student loan debt, if someone's $700,000 in the hole or whatever, what's like worst case scenario? If someone goes to med school, oh, someone yeah, gets a PhD. Oh, yeah, if they do all of that, probably three, 400 at least. Yeah, probably and then it compounds with interest mm -hmm. over the decades. Like I was reading the story about this woman who took out $150,000 in student loans and she hasn't been able to pay them back, and now she's 250000 in the hole. Yeah. Jeez. And they're the most vicious type of loans, too. Of course. Like, it's easier to get, get out of credit card debt. You know, it's, oh, you, you it's can't even get out through bankruptcy. Out. Yeah. yeah. People are having their social security docked. People who've made it to the end of life. They're, they're re re relying on government assistance, right? It's essentially government assistance that we pay for. And they're getting that docked to pay for student loan debt. Yeah, it's such a, it's such a fucked up system. Like, I'm completely against student loan debt just I, I uh, um you know forgiving the debt just because i think it's like it's it's just you're just punishing the taxpayers for the the debt of um in many cases a more privileged group it's like the, the people who didn't go to college now have to bail out the people who did you know but man it is such a fucked up system that they trap these 18 year old kids it's into signing up for, and that no one at the colleges even like the fact, I mean, obviously the politicians are like soulless and the bankers are just trying to make money, but that none of, no one in the university ever has the, the basic human decency to look at one of these kids who goes, hey, you know, you're spending 150 grand on a gender studies major. Just think about that. Think about whether or not this is really a good idea. They just go, oh, OK, we'll take the money. Well, all no they're problem. hoping is they're going to get a job in a university. 
Right. If it's you, a Ponzi scheme, basically. Yeah. You'll teach this to other people until no one's signing up for this anymore. <laughs> you'll you'll learn useless shit that isn't even true, and then you'll teach it to other people who want to use learn this useless shit to teach it to other people. And let's just hope we keep getting new investors into this thing until it all goes belly up. And what's really wild is then most, especially tech companies, they're so progressive and so liberal, and they're kind of trapped in that ideology, which can hamper what they want to do and what they're what they're allowed to do with their company because you get activists who are employees so your employees become act and they go straight from universities where they're indoctrinated into this ideology and then they permeate these tech companies and some of them are fucked and yeah. some of some of them are realizing it and they're pushing back and they go that, 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 stop 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 you guys are killing our stock you're fucking up the business like it's a it's a giant loss in terms of like whether or not it's good for the overall company, it's a giant loss for some of them. Like Netflix. Well, yeah. Netflix took a giant hit after all that Ch Chappelle shit. Oh yeah, yeah, of course. Well, I mean, it just and and if you think about like with the tech censorship stuff, uh, um, if you think about like in like 2014, 2015, this basically didn't exist. And this isn't that long ago that y you kind of could say whatever you wanted to. Yeah, I'll have a little bit. Thank you. You could say whatever you wanted to on on Twitter. More, or less. I mean, I remember like really wild people saying crazy shit on Twitter, and there was never even a thought like, "Oh, you're going to get kicked off for saying right. this." It was just like it's, it's the That's internet. 